Welcome back. You're watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. And joining us on the Hercules Tire Zoom line now is none other than Darren Pittman. Darren, I want to start because a month ago you tweeted out you had no racing plans for 2022. Not even a month later, you end up in a car that you are absolutely familiar with. Talk about how this all kind of came into fruition and how you ended up in Casey Kane's ride a few weekends ago. Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, I went to the races that weekend with uh, no intentions of racing whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I mean, I still don't have any races uh, scheduled. Um, you know, that one just kind of happened to fall in place um, very spur of the moment. So, um, we had always planned as a family to go to page and, and watch and, and make a weekend out of it. And obviously catching up with some customers and, uh, to enjoy the races. It's about a three and a half hour drive from Tyler. So, um, we were running a little late. I had to work. It was Friday and I didn't want to leave any earlier. So I don't think we left here till almost three o'clock. Uh, actually it might've been closer to four by the time we picked up the kids from school and got on the road and, uh, was watching, um, uh, on dirt vision, uh, what hot laps qualifying on dirt vision. Uh, we rolled up right as the first heat race was finishing. Uh, so we got there late. Um, I remember walking, we w watched the first heat or the first heat finished. We walked in getting our pit pass and I walked, I walked up to the track and stood and watched about two laps of the second heat race and realized I was standing in a not so good spot that I didn't feel safe. Uh, if something went bad. So I was like, this is dumb. So I walked off and I thought, well, I'll go down to the pits and, and see Casey and see why he fell out of the seat race. I didn't see it on dirt vision, but I saw a race monitor that it didn't finish. So I walked down there and the crew was thrashing, fixing the rear end. They had the ladder knocked out of it. The tail tank was damaged. The right rear wheel was damaged. And I kind of made a comment to Tony Barkman, one of his crew guys who was on the 83 the last year I drove it. And they obviously were busy and didn't really want to talk. And so I actually left and went to go watch the third heat. And on the way up there, uh, I ran into Barry Jackson and got busy talking to him and ended up watching the third heat on Dirt Vision in his trailer. Um, and so never did walk up to the racetrack. And about five minutes after the third heat, my phone rings and it's my wife. And I answer and she said, hey, you need to come to the nine trailer. And I was like, OK, I'll be over there in a minute. She's like, no, you need to come now. And I was like, OK. So I walked into the trailer and talked to Casey and, um, you know, he was in a good mood and he said hey um i need you to do me a favor he's so i said what's that and he's like man i just don't feel very good something doesn't feel right um yet and he said but the good news is uh i got you a really good starting spot for the b you get to start last because i fell out of my heat race and i said are you serious and he said no I, I want you to run my car in the b he said let's race tomorrow but let's go ahead and run the b tonight and see how it goes i was like okay so i didn't bring anything i put on his suit um, you know, third heat's already over. I haven't even looked at the racetrack other than the two laps I watched from not a very good spot. And, um, uh, I walk out and the crew sees me in my, in, in, in his suit and they're like, what the heck is going on? And so Casey immediately starts helping me adjust my belt. Um, they're still fixing the car at this point they're the dash is already on the horn. Uh, and so uh, Justin Adams comes by and says, hey, I talked to the officials. Everybody's good. They know you're starting last. Um, it's like, okay. Casey's around the car and helping me get ready. Uh, we're running late. The dash is over. We're still in our pit stall. Uh, I've never used a hybrid. I've only ever used a Hans. I didn't even know how to hook the thing up. So Casey is hooking it up for me. The outlaw official is behind us, waiting on us, and he's yelling at us to hurry, and we're like, we know we're starting last anyway. It's not a big deal. So, uh, and so, I mean, there was a few other things, but anyway, we go out the racetrack and I'm lining up in the back. And next thing they know is they kept telling me nine car, you're starting third. So uh, I'm in the process of lining up in the back and they told me twice to go and start third. So I'm under full intentions that they know that I'm driving the car and that I must not be aware of the rules. So I go and start third and we transfer and come back to the trailer. And I mean, I'm not hiding in the trailer. We're all outside. Casey's standing outside the whole time. And before the main is when they come by and talk to us and 
Apparently, the official that we had told never radioed to people that needed to know um, what happened. There was some confusion. Apparently, he didn't understand what was going on. I don't know how he didn't recognize Casey outside the car helping me get ready. Um, at the end of the day, we thought we were starting last when we pushed off onto the racetrack. Um, we, you know, nothing was done trying to, secretively to try to hide what was going on. Uh, yes, I'm not gonna lie. I assumed I should have started last by a driver change from my recollection of rules and doing this for a long time. Uh, but it was also my understanding that they all knew that I was driving and they kept telling me to go and start third. So, I mean, yeah, as a racer, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go start third. I want to try to make the race. And, uh, so we did. So it, it was a bad deal. I mean, you know, I don't think at the end of the day, we all wanted Casey driving. Um, and, uh, it was some miscommunication from our part, the outlaws part. It, it happened so fast, um, that it was pretty much pandemonium down there, to be honest with you, uh, the whole time, just even trying to get on the racetrack and, uh, to get out there to even, you know, run the 12 laps, uh, B main. And then obviously we had more time the next day to, uh, I brought, had somebody bring my suit, my helmet, my stuff that I was more comfortable with to run the next day. Um, and uh, that made it a lot better. It was, it, it was a, a bit of a mess and a lot of confusion going on uh, in a short amount of time. I feel like the biggest question through all, I mean, there's really two big questions here is number one, how do you drive a sprint car without your tractor pedal? And number two, how do you fit in Casey Kane's fire suit? Uh, I can guarantee you there are some photos somebody has that I hope never get out of me in his suit. Uh, and, you know, I don't consider myself a large individual, but I mean, you Anybody who shoves herself into Casey's suit, you feel like a <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, we're pretty much the same size except everywhere around the gut, and I was about to blow it out. So uh, that was a, a challenge in itself. I do think that it helped me get into his seat uh, because it was like I was wearing Spanx as a, a suit that helped me fit into it. But, um, yeah, without the pet, honestly, it was um, – it was pretty uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm in a helmet that I've never used. I was actually idling around there trying to get some air and I didn't even know how to unlatch the thing because it was a different brand. And I'm like, I don't know how to unlatch the helmet. I don't know how to unclip this hybrid. Um, I'm just not familiar with anything. So I'm like, man, this, I don't need anything to go bad. I, I was honestly looking forward to starting last and just making a few laps to try to get comfortable and see how things felt. And then when we start third, now I'm like, oh, man, I got a race. Like, this is, you know, I, I can't start third and not transfer. I mean, I hadn't been in a car since National Open and even seen the racetrack yet. But, um, yeah, it was, it was not my most comfortable 12-lap uh, race I've ever ran. Karen, I'm absolutely impressed that you know what Spanx are. <laughs> 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 Getting back in the car two weekends ago for Casey, did it kind of – light a fire that you thought maybe you kind of pushed to the side has has it created a, a feeling that you wanted to feel again um no it honestly it hasn't I thought it, it might uh, I'm not gonna lie it was cool to get back in the nine for a weekend I mean that car is obviously gonna always have a special place you know in, in my heart and, and that team um although none of the people are there um anymore it's you know basically completely different but uh no I mean it, it's almost if anything just you know, confirmed my decision to step away and, and, and I did still enjoy it. I do still want to compete, um, you know, but, you know, not at that, not consistently and, you know, at no point did I ever think, oh man, I, you know, I want to go back on the road and do this every week. So, um, like I said, I do still have the desire to race, but, um, it really more just confirmed that it's at the tracks that I want to race at ones that I, I'm comfortable and, and enjoy going to. And while I, I like page, I've actually ran good there before. That was, you know, that was not on the top 10 list of places that I was, you know, excited to go back and run. So um, I think it just more solidified, you know, I'm, I'm happy with what we're doing with the business and ultra shield and, um, I'm enjoying being a fan. Honestly, it's, it's, it, I went to be a fan and to watch and, uh, you know, really wasn't able to do that. So, um, it, it's, I'm enjoying watching it on Dirt Vision and, uh, enjoying just trying to get, uh, you know, more people comfortable and, and more people in our ultra shield seats and, and using our belts and, and just trying to promote our product. 
We saw you last year run part time with with the Swindell Speed Lab team, and and obviously this kind of one off start here in the nine car. When you go from like literally running 80, 90 nights a year for as long as you did, and then you flip and now you're only going to run a few races, how difficult is it to kind of get up to speed on, on a night to night basis? I mean, are you comfortable immediately in the car? And, and even last year, when, you know, if you, if you look at the, the Speed Lab 39, like that's going to have your seat and it's going to have, you, you know, your setup in it. But are you comfortable immediately or does it kind of take you a few laps after you've been out of the seat for a few weeks? When, when your car's good, everything's comfortable. You know, it's, it's the harder nights are when you're struggling and you're not quite there and I think it's easy for me as long as I've done it um I think it's easy for me to get in anybody's car and go out there and be 85 90 percent you know I mean I can be pretty competitive pretty quick um 90 percent is not going to win your race it's you're going to struggle to run top five top 10 at 90 percent so I think you know I can go out there and probably look like I've tried at least look like I've done it before on a really short notice and even uncomfortable situations like you know somebody else's equipment but you know to try to be good enough to think you're going to be david gravel and brad sweet and donnie shots and these guys that are just on their game and and comfortable and and really gelling with their teams and um that that's tough now can it be done absolutely but it, it just makes it that much more difficult to try to elevate yourself from you know that 80 90 percent to going out there thinking you're going to be the best, um, in the business, um, you know, consistently, uh, let alone, you know, it's tough enough to just try to do it one time. If things go your way or circumstances fall in your way, but, um, those guys are good. And it's, uh, I think, you know, every night that we watch these races, we realize how many good cars are out there and the talent level that that's on the road and, and the product that they're, uh, you know, putting out. Darren, you added your name to that list for, for many, many years, um, but obviously stepping away from full-time racing, you mentioned it, um, Ultra Shield Racing Products. You and Mandy took over the business, bought it, and have been running it this last year, year and a half now. How are things going there? You've always been at the forefront of safety. How important has this really been to you? You know, something that I've been passionate about for, you know, quite a while, I've been hurt, you know enough times over my career that uh it was something that i enjoyed and want to continue to see you know the direction and the way that the sport's going you know continue to trend um to to be safer i mean i think there's a lot of things over the last three four or five years that have really helped and and you know that's never going to stop i mean if we stop evolving it's when we're going to get behind so um what is the next thing I don't, you know, we're, we're working at it and we'll have to be, pay attention to see, you know, what is the next immediate need that the sprint cars, midgets, micros, really any form of racing needs, uh, to, to try to be safer as we, as we learn more and more, um, as we get more educated and learn stuff from, obviously it takes accidents or, or problems for us to realize, you know, what is the most immediate need to improve on. So um, I enjoyed that side of it. Um, I want to make people comfortable. You know, obviously you want to be safe in a seat. You want to be comfortable in a seat. Um, there's a lot of aspects to that and just trying to, um, and there's no such thing as one size fits all. So, I mean, it's, you know, we've got to be willing to adapt to, you know, uh, different body styles and sizes and, and uh, things that are important to them on, you know, if, if it's shoulders, if it's ribs, if it's no matter what, everybody likes something a little bit different about their seats. So, you know, we're uh, just continuing to work to improve the product. And it's a great product. They had a great brand recognition for, um, you know, they've been in business since uh, early 90s. So a, a long time. Uh, we're just uh, trying to improve off of that and just continue to make strides in the right direction. Busier schedule, Word of Outlaw Sprint Car Driver or business owner? <laughs> that one's easy. Uh, business owner. <laughs> I, I, I complained for years how busy our schedule was. And, uh, yeah, I had no idea. You know, all my friends told me, you've never had a real job. You don't understand. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you try doing what we do. It's different. I mean, it's, um, I think the mental side of traveling the road and, and you only have, you know, we have, what do we race? 80, 85 nights a year, 90 nights a year. Well, you have 90 paydays a year. So the pressure that goes along with, you know, you don't get to work you know, Monday through Friday and, and earn a paycheck, uh, you're limited on how many paydays you get. So it's a different mental aspect for sure, being on the road and racing. Uh, but as far as just the sheer hours and 
um, there's no comparison. So I've, you know, I'm excited where we're at, but I've never been as tired as I am now. And, and it, you know, what keeps you up at night thinking about, okay, how do we improve this or, uh, and being behind, I mean, we're quite a ways behind on, on really most of our products right now. And, um, it's a good thing, but it's a problem. It's a problem that we want to fix. So, you know, uh, as, as a race car driver, every day is a problem on how do we improve our race team? Well, you know, I take that same mentality to our business and how do we fix it? So we're not just trying to get by to get by. We're trying to, you know, look at what a problem is the most important and needs fixed today and how do we fix it and how do we make it better for the future? And so, uh, it's definitely been an eye opener, uh, fortunate to have been able to skip out on a real job for 25 years. Uh, but it, it's definitely a lot more time consuming and, uh, you know, I don't want to use the word grueling, but, uh, definitely a different, uh, lifestyle, what we're doing now versus travel on the road. When that phone rings, unfortunately, no matter what time of the day it is, you have to pick it up, yeah, <laughs> especially absolutely. in the early stages. But uh, yeah. Darren, that being said, we won't take any more of your time. We appreciate you jumping on with us. Good to see you back on the track and uh, best of luck with the continued success with your business. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more Wing Nation right here, presented by Sage Fruit.